to get zero. Oh, that's Cold Weather. Gotcha. Okay. okay. All right, so right now we have our next match coming up. We've got Cold Weather, the voice you were just hearing a little minute ago, against a zero. And then you have to play next, right, after this on stream? Yeah, I don't know if I'm on stream. Uh, you just said you okay. put Cold Weather in here, I think. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, I played Narcian. Okay. So that's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. Um, I'm going to die at the so, right. so I got to take a second. Like, Cold Weather's my boy and all. Like, he's a homie, Smash 4 homie. But I got to hype up my boy Zero because, all right, a little bit of history lesson here. Brawl used to, have, used to have an online scene. Most people know all is Brawl, like the place yeah. where it used to be at. But they had a lot of French scenes too. And one of them, which I came from, was uh, Brawl Francos. It had like such a cute little name, but like there used to be some good competition on there. And Zerom was one of the people who used to be on my site with me. So um, one of you know the old online homies. Good to see some of them still repping out in Smash 4. Nazo was on there too, actually. So. We, we still out here. Yeah. We still out here. That's crazy because I, I never played Brawl competitively. I played every Smash game like since it came out. Um, but Smash 4 is my first competitive game. So I don't really have all this deep lore that you guys will have. Yeah. We're just old. <laughs> like, you can call it deep lore. We, we call it old man stories. <laughs> Back in my day, we had to wait two minutes after we hit a button on Wi-Fi for it to work. <laughs> you whippersnappers don't know how good you have it. So far, Cold Weather, even though he's a newer player, well, I say newer, he's still been playing like since Smash 4 came out. Yeah. Like, even though he's has been playing Smash as long as Zero has, he's doing a great job keeping up with him. And I feel like at this point in the game, it's equalized, you know? Nice spacing, good patience by Cold Weather, getting that tipper forward tilt. And now here's the edge guard. Nah, just plays it safe. Yeah, I think he was a little bit worried that he was going to overcommit and get killed for it, so just took the ledge coverage. Yeah, it's a very real thing to think about against Ness because, like, you give him that space, and then, like, now you're by the ledge with Ness staring at you backwards. But nice. Yeah, Sour spot, really upbeat, a back air. No tippers needed. <laughs> but, like, any time off stage, he could have gotten aired, up aired, upbeat. Like, anything would have killed him. So he was just trying to look more safe. Um, but up air just going to kill him. No rage needed. Just, just take him out. Yeah, and that was actually really patient coming through from. Um, Zero. I'm just delaying that up there because most nests just like throw that out there because it's so big and it's so safe. But and it, it does a lot of shield damage, so like you think you can pressure him, but if you time the race, if you're a little bit more patient, you can just get the kill flat out with it. So. Yeah. All right, nice nair to break that chain by uh, Zero. And now the fair plane is going to send Cold Weather pretty far off stage, but still recovers nice. And I like how he's fighting his way back on stage, never overcommitting. On, only eats PK fire for his trouble. And we talk yeah. about that crouch though. Cold Weather's moving. Do you know what number Zero is on PR? Um, I do not remember off the top of my head. Yeah, Cold Weather is definitely one of those like gatekeepers around the end of PR. Uh, but Zero is on PR. Yeah. Yeah, Cold Weather. Yeah, definitely gatekeeper, like you were saying. And he, could, I feel like he can be almost anyone outside like the top ten or five on our PR. You and know. even then, like, I've seen him, I don't know if he's, like, beaten any of the PR, but I've seen him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. <laughs> yeah, case in point, taking first game off of Zero. And I like how he, how much he waited on the edge guard, because most time Marts would be itching for that counter. Like, they see such mm -hmm. a big move that uh, you have to recover through, and it's like, all right, I counter this free. Yeah, but it does, like, 30 damage, so you counter that, and you do, like, 45 damage and kill him. Yeah, but sometimes Ness is, like, they have their tricks. They'll delay it, they'll wait it out, hit you with a back hit. So that time, Cold Weather's like, wait, I still have a sword. Let me just space this out and uh, hit you with that and hold this. So here we go. Uh, Cold Weather drawing first blood, but in game two, anything could happen, especially on this counter pick. Now, do you think he wants to battlefield over Dreamland because of the, the stage? You only get pineapple? Um, it's possible. I know some Nesses did hate that for a really long time. Because typically I see... If you're going to go to a tripod against a Mark Lucina, you take him to Dreamland because then they can't hit the platforms as well. Mm -hmm. So I wonder what the, uh, the thought process is that. It might have just been as simple as pineappling. Yeah, or just bigger blast zones, like bigger top. Might just be aiming to live longer, even though he never died particularly early. And he's got that easy kill confirmed with the back throw. It's like, that's going to kill all the time, so... Yeah. To be honest, though, I don't think Cold Weather's gotten grabbed the set. I'm thinking about it, and I don't recall a grab actually happening. So that just is really a testament to how well he's spacing right now. Yeah, I think that's one of Marth's strengths. Definitely is to keep you out with pressure, which is not a character, not something that every character can do. But 
He's got a really good uh, disjoint, pretty good neutral. Yeah, and now it's working out great for him. Not going out there for the edge guard, just trying to get this ledge pressure going. But he's in air, but you know what? We're still out here. It's still going. Nice reversal, though. Did he burn his jump there? Yeah, he did, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if he hit him with that thunder, he might have been able to kill him with like a down smasher. Depending on the recovery, maybe even like a back air down there. Yeah, and that's just, definitely has some good options. And his floatiness is kind of helpful when edge guarding. Yeah, because you can just sit out there in the air in front of them, and they can't do anything. They, can, they have to double jump, they have to air dodge. They can't get past you. Yeah, and Zeram doing a great job reversing it, using that bit of a ledge pressure to um, work out in his favor this time instead. And now we see this one grabs, and now we see some damage. Yeah, 42% string. And uh, manages to hit himself in the ground so he can't get hit. Is he invincible a little bit during that? Uh, it's, I'm pretty sure it's like missing a tech, so you can like, oh, like get, get up, up and, and yeah. roll and stuff like that. So yeah, I wasn't sure if he was like a little bit invincible, like as the thunder hit him. I'm not positive. So. A good grab. I don't think up throw will kill yet, though. Good call. <laughs> yeah, the DI was a little bit off, but with battlefield, I don't see that killing mess. Ooh. Oh, this Unless he yeah. pushes him. Just up throw him. Oh, him. yeah, you pushed him just a little bit. If he had actually just up thrown him, that would have been it. Sometimes you want to go for the big hit, but if you don't need it, you don't always need to take it. But still, the tip of forward air should do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> From center stage. So he didn't lose too much off of missing that shield break punch, but... Yeah, we'll see how much he regrets not being more aggressive in the original, uh, the initial edge guard situation. Um, because now he's down... 80% when he didn't have to be. Yeah. Nice stop on the dancing blade, but still, Zeram so quick with that Nair out of shield. And yeah, Cold Weather needed to do that. Otherwise, he would have been dead to a forward smash. Because Zeram lived to one, what was it, 165? Yeah, it was something um, above 150. Yeah, and that wouldn't have happened if you got him way earlier than that. So we'll see. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Setting him up and putting him down. The PK Thunder with the assist yet again. He kind of left him out to dry a couple times. Like he was just spinning in circles trying to catch him, and that time it got the kill for him. So yeah. you definitely understand why he goes for it. Um, and it paid off. He had a huge lead, so he's not going to miss, any, miss out on anything by whiffing a, a PK Thunder there. Yeah, and plus, like, Marth, he can get back to the ledge really quickly, but... Depending on where you start, he doesn't really have all the tools to get there fast enough to punish you, you know? Yeah, I would expect maybe like uh, Fair or Nair, and that would be the whole punish. Yeah. All right, so game three between these two players. Uh, both these guys are playing really well on their own stages. So now let's see if Zeram can make this counter pick happen and work in his favor and bring the set all the way home. Or if Coldweather can pull the upset. It'd be a pretty solid one, too, because Zeram's definitely a very notable player oh. in this region. That got scary. That was like a, a tail hit away from TK Thunder 2 and, and him dying at like 40. Yeah, that move is insanely strong. And Mart's not exceptionally heavy. He's near the bottom of, of middle weight. Yeah. Yeah, so now it would definitely kill. Like, absolutely. Won't, we'll say anywhere on stage, but Zeram, I think he burned his jump. I yeah. Was good. Oh, oh, no! Man. Not like that. He, he hates that. I haven't beaten him. I don't even know how many times. It's so frustrating. Yeah, I think that like might be a bit of a pro controller thing too, right? Because it doesn't have the little notches to guide you. I didn't know he used um, back in the day he did. I don't know if he still does though. I have to check his controller later, but yeah. I mean, if he doesn't use pro controller, that's still like an unfortunate uh, error. Yeah, because like you get stuck, like you get one side B, and then you just mash up B, and you just keep getting side up. But still, he's making it work for him, almost killing with his fair, and he has to go out here. Just barely sneaking back on the ledge. That's so scary. <laughs> yeah. Good spacing, though, so far. Just barely whipping that dash attack. Oh, no, he doesn't have a jump. He's caught in the corner. But now Zeram's getting the better on these neutral exchanges. Is he dead? If he gets hit by the PK Thunder. Magnets, and nice movement by Cold Weather staying alive. He's an up air, but that could have been way worse. Yeah, he was... On death door. Yeah, and now up throw should be able to kill on Town City. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> nice, the Nair covering that space and tippering too. So now this is rough for cold weather, but still not undoable. Rage, like, rage is always a factor, but yeah. Ness's back air is always a factor too. Oh my gosh. That air dodge, he, he was only expecting a more 
aggressive approach by Zerum, and Zerum was not expecting him to give him the air dodge, so a little bit over patient. Everyone's nervous here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, RK, I mean, not RK, um, Zerum has to know how much a da oh, or a danger he's in, but... Kidding me? No rage. Yeah, like when you're in danger, sometimes what I gotta do is hold